Hello there, my name is Elatrium, and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Redstone tutorial with your favorite cardigan wearing Minecraft character. And today in this episode, I'll be showing you how to build this one wide hidden chisel bookshelf doorway for your Minecraft Bedrock 1.20 world. Yes, now with the Minecraft 1.20 pre-releases now coming out, we are going to start our content rollout of everything 1.20. So if you want to see all the new things you can do in Minecraft 20, all the new farms, make sure you subscribe so that you get notified when new content comes out for Minecraft 1.20. But this is the perfect build to add to your fantasy builds because who doesn't want a bookshelf where you pull a book off the shelf and then a secret door opens? It is the quintessential hidden doorway for Minecraft, for almost any fantasy build for that matter. And thanks to these chisel bookshelves and our ability to pull a redstone signal out of them depending upon how many books are in there, this is the perfect mechanism for you to hide a secret room or frankly, anything that you want in your base. And these chiseled bookshelves make it so easy to hide things because you can stack hundreds of thousands of books in these depending on how big you make this and hide this activation lever just about anywhere. So let's go ahead and dive straight into the tutorial for how to build this. So building this is fairly straightforward. We're gonna just start by building the one wide doorway. You're gonna start with having an observer facing down. I recommend you build this up a few blocks just so you have some space two observers coming out of the right of that observer and then two pistons on top of it. Next here, we're gonna add a wool block and we're going to grab ourselves a comparator here in this location and we're gonna place this comparator feeding into this wool block. I placed it wrong in here. I'll fix it towards the end of the video, but just know that that needs to be flipped around into the wool block. Then we're gonna add a, a dropper and then we're going to actually place another dropper that feeds down into it and then place a redstone dust or any item down in this bottom dropper. You can knock out that temporary rock that we placed there and we're going to add a observer that's going to be facing up. So the dots can be facing up and then we're gonna add a, another observer that is going to point into this other piston that we have. Next, you're gonna to wanna to grab yourself a repeater and put it on three ticks on top of this. That is going to be pointed once again. I have it in the wrong direction. It needs to be pointed into this block that I just placed here. So make sure that that repeater is pointed into this block. We'll fix that here in just a second. Next, grab yourself a, another observer, have that dot feed into that. And now you can understand why things need to be aligned the way they are. Next, grab yourself a sticky piston with a solid redstone block. Then we're gonna flip this around right quick so everything's correct. Make sure that that is on three ticks. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on over and start more of the build. So place a wool block here on top of this sticky piston, sticky piston here and here. And then we're going to stop with that and move over to the left side of the build. And then we'll work our way around clockwise to finish everything out. Place down two temporary blocks as shown here. We're gonna grab ourselves an observer pointed into this bottom piece of sticky piston that we have here. Then we're gonna grab a repeater on four ticks and feed that into this sticky piston. Next, grab yourself a dropper. You can place it really in any orientation you want. We don't need anything in it and just piece a piece of redstone dust on top of it. Coming over here to the left, place a couple of temporary wool blocks and make this little L pattern right here. We're going to fill this up with a repeater and four ticks pointed into this wool block. Make sure that that's on four ticks and one on the right. Torch, another wool block, two torches like so. Then a wool block on top of that. Sticky piston, sticky piston, sticky piston. Have this little offset shape. Then we're going to ladder these wool blocks up as shown here. Next, you're gonna to want to place a couple of temporary blocks just above, you want it two above so we can have a sticky piston just like this, continuing our stair pattern, and then line the top of these with redstone dust. Glass block directly to the right, stair step down, and then glass on top of everything here, and continue the pattern. Now, one thing I do recommend if you're using chisel bookshelves for this is replace that block with a chisel bookshelf. It'll make decorating a little bit easier for you. So now you are basically done. Just make sure at the very bottom there, 
you flip this comparator around, that will make the activation mechanism work. And if you're just using a sticky piston attached to a redstone block with a lever, that is how you can open this door. But of course, that's no fun. You want your door to be secret and you want the activation mechanism so also be secret. So once you've had fun flipping this lever on and off about 100 times to see this beautiful activation mechanism, let's go ahead and close this door up and then build our bookshelves to hide where we're gonna put our activation mechanism for this. So we're gonna start just simply by aligning the sides of this. This is going to hide all of the redstone mechanics. You can make this room as big or as small as you want. I'm just gonna make a very small three-ish by three-ish room to store us in just for demonstration purposes. You can hook up your activation mechanism to any one of these chiseled bookshelves that we have here as long as those chiseled bookshelves aren't going to feed directly into another part of the redstone contraption itself so you can't obviously build it into the door itself and probably one block out you'll need a little bit of gap and spacing so that you can actually wire things together without the two mechanisms interfering for the roof and the floor make sure that you are placing this along the sides of the chisel bookshelves. The chisel bookshelves won't let you place anything directly on top of them. They're expecting bookshelves. I'm sure that that was to fix a other bug that someone might have noticed. And same here on the floor. You need to make sure that you are feeding that directly into another solid block of some kind. It really doesn't matter. It just can't be the chisel bookshelf itself. But once you have all of your decorations in place, again, we just have a very small room. You want to pick any one of these chisel bookshelves here to the left and the right. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to pick, say, the top left block right here. I could pick any one of them along this wall, basically. It really doesn't matter as long as it's not touching any of the other redstone for the door. So that's our block right there. We're going to grab ourselves a slab, have a comparator come out of that. That's going to feed into a target block. Then we're gonna have that target block loop around itself with a signal using two comparators and a piece of redstone dust. So comparator here, comparator here, redstone dust right there. We're gonna feed that into a wool block or any other type of solid block as long as it's not glass. Redstone dust on top. Then we're going to simply staircase this down and wire it up to our door. Now, you can alter how many books it takes for you to connect to the door if you add in a redstone repeater somewhere along this line. So this one right here, there's a signal strength of about five. So we're going to need to do one, two, and see it won't activate. There's three. The door won't activate until we have a sufficiently strong signal strength coming into it. So if you want a slightly reduced signal strength in place, that one uses five. Say you wanted three, we can just add a redstone repeater there in that line. However, I will say that it is beneficial for you to consider having this sort of weird long delay on things because anyone coming in just grabbing books or putting books back in might not actually activate your door due to the signal strength. So depending upon how you want to tinker with things and how you want your bookshelves to be really secret and what you want your activation code to be, it might be worthwhile for you to have this really long delay. But like I said, if you aren't interested in a super long delay, just feed a redstone repeater coming out of the signal block right here. You can place it in this position if you want it really, really high. So if you basically add a single book that will turn the mechanism on and off, course if you don't want that you can move that further on down the chain and that will simplify the circuit as well so for instance if we move this redstone repeater right over here now we have this activate at a different set of timings but that's going to be it for me in this episode as always thank you so much for watching if you like this video you like minecraft 1.20 blocks and all the new things coming out please consider giving this video a like and please consider subscribing as it really does help this channel grow and reach more people who might be interested in red cone circuits just like you. Like I said, that's it for me in this episode. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.